Good morning and welcome to Christ Church Bolton as we come together to offer up our morning prayers on this Tuesday in the week of Lent 4. As we come together in prayer, let us take some time in silence yet again today to pray for this world in which we live and that leaders throughout the world will be led by your grace, O oh Lord, to work together for peace, particularly in the Ukraine. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. Let us hear God's word to us in the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then he charged them, saying to them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my ancestors in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave in the field at Machpelah near Mamre in the land of Canaan, in the field that Abram bought from Ephron the Hittite as a burial site. There, Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There, Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there, I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it were purchased from the Hittites. When Jacob ended his charge to his sons, he drew up his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph threw himself on his father's face and west wept over him and kissed him. Joseph commanded the physicians in his service to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. They spent 40 days in doing this, for that is the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him 70 days. When the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph addressed the household of Pharaoh. If now I have found favor with you, please speak to Pharaoh as follows. My father made me swear an oath. He said, I am about to die in the tomb that I hewed out for myself in the land of Canaan. There you shall bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up so that I may bury my father. Then I will return. Pharaoh answered, go up and bury your father as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went to bury his father, and with him went all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the household of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's household. Only their children, their flocks, and their herds were left in the land of Goshen. Both chariots and charioteers went up with him. It was a very great company. When they came to the threshing floor of Apad, which is beyond the Jordan, they held there a very great and sorrowful lamentation. And he observed a time of mourning for his father seven days. When the Canaanite inhabitants of the land saw the mourning on the threshing floor of Apad, 
they said, this is a grievous mourning on the part of the Egyptians. Therefore, the place was named Abel Mitraim, beyond the Jordan. Thus his sons did for him as he had instructed them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of, in the field of Machpelah, the field near Mamre, which Abram bought as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalms proper to today are Psalms 97 and 99. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over the earth, all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you the righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. In Psalm 99, the Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God, is the Holy One. And a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the church at Corinth. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have, have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper, for when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with their own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? 
Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. And when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you have come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instruction when I come. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This piece from the 11th chapter of Paul's letter to Corinth is an extremely important biblical passage. When we understand that the main corpus of Paul's letters was written before the very first gospel was ever penned, the second paragraph of this passage is the very first record of Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room to share in that first Holy Eucharist. And Paul does not downplay the importance of those actions or of this explanation of about a month ago in Bible study, Carol Whitehead pointed out that as the people of Israel first entered into the wilderness and they were wandering about there in the wilderness, <clears throat> Moses goes up the mountain and he comes back down bearing for them the tablets of the law. And Carol said, is this not essentially the establishment of a nation, a people. God has given them this law, a codified law, so that they know how to live together as a people, as a nation. God has given them this law, this guidance, in order to make it so that they will live differently from their neighbors around them and shine the light of God in a darkened world. So Paul says, is this meal. In this meal, Jesus has called us together, called us out, which is the true meaning of the word ecclesia, which we translate to church. It means those called out. We are called out of the world. We are called together into a community. And that community is built on and defined by that simple meal. And Paul is calling this church at Corinth to task because they have lost the meaning of the meal altogether. He tells how they come together, but they don't form community. 
Instead, this one goes over to the corner and has a feast, and that one goes over to a different place and is sitting there starving. They're each doing their own thing. They've missed the point that we are called together to share in this simple, simple meal. Not to feed our bodily hunger, but to help to define us as a community. As a community different from the world outside that community. As a community where we don't set up systems <clears throat> that allow one to have too much and another to have far too little. In this supper, we all stand before God as equals. And in that supper, Christ calls us then to treat one another completely as equals, just as God has set us before God's eyes as equals. And then this meal calls us to go out into the world and to do the same, to refuse <clears throat> to step into the system of values out there in the world that says that the rich and the powerful are somehow more valuable than the poorest of the poor. This meal that we will celebrate on Wednesday and twice again on Sunday is the celebration of our call to come together in community, to become a people, to become a nation that lives with, that shares with others a completely different set of values kingdom values. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves today in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you and ever eager to follow in the steps of the one who is our true leader, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord God, the wellspring of life, pour into our hearts the living water of your grace. 
by your light we see light. Increase our faith and grant that we may walk in the brightness of your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting one, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the following of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.